mentioned Stu and Russell. What about some other strong influences in your career early days? Yeah, it was so probably two two of the lecturing staff stood out. So Paul Ford being one who had um, different ideas on training to to what I'd been exposed to uh, up until that stage. So he he was he was quite challenging in a lot of ways. And I probably still is actually. Uh, probably still challenges a few, but it was it was for me it was really really good to get a different perspective on on training and really functional type training that can be done. Um, and then I, I had a, an exercise physiology lecturer, uh, Mark Fabreo, who, um, for those that know Professor Mark Fabreo, um, you'll know him as a, as a brilliant medical researcher these days. But he was back then he was probably still dabbling in some triathlon. He'd been uh, quite a successful age group triathlete um, in his in his time, uh, and so lots of conversations with him around training and. And back then, he was dead certain that he knew everything about training. I'm sure he's softened over the years, as we all have. What did you draw on those guys to, to increase your productivity? What was some sort of standout? Well, M- Maddie was well after I'd finished mine. <laughs> so that, um, I, I think it's just seeing the work ethic uh, and seeing, seeing them challenge themselves um, in ways that, that aren't quite normal, like Stu dropping weight for, to fight in a lower weight division whilst you know still actually being active and, and his brain working properly and uh, being able to do his day job just just how they actually just day to day do that and, and manage that um so maddie was was inspirational in that uh, and I, I don't think he'd mind me saying that he, he's not necessarily a, a natural student you know he's he's very very much in the applied camp mm-hmm. but he engaged with the phd process and just worked his butt off with it um, you really, really put the effort in. And if you're organised and you put the effort in as a PhD student, you're, you're two-thirds of the way there, really. How's the project going now? So you five years in, is that right? Yeah, so we're, we're the test institute for FIFA around the, uh, the accuracy of athlete tracking systems. So that's the, the yep. main project that we're involved with. Uh, we're also doing some testing around virtual offside line um, that FIFA want to use in the World Cup this year. And I think we're, as of today, about 37 days away from our next test event where we actually test the accuracy of that as well. So that's optical-based systems that can do limb tracking um, because obviously there's scoring parts of the body in football or or soccer, as as we know it, probably more so in Australia. And so any scoring part of the body, you need to know the position of that relative to the second last defender and when the ball was kicked uh, to determine offside. Uh, And at the moment, if you need to go to the, the video referee, the process takes too long. So they want a, an almost real-time solution, uh, which some of the optical pro- providers may well be able to, to do for FIFA uh, with enough accuracy that it's actually worthwhile. So that's that's the next challenge really for us. And uh, the, the relationships that Victoria University has with these uh, high-performance sporting clubs like Western Bulldogs, uh, why do you think other clubs don't have that relationship? But clearly it's been successful for Western Bulldogs for, with their premiership success once the program had started and, and speak to students that have done the cadetship, they get a lot from it. So mm. it seems like everyone's winning um, with that partnership. Yeah, I think I think most universities or most teams have some sort of a partnership with the university, probably not to the depth and breadth of the Bulldogs VU one. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that, that most clubs have access to something from whether it's one or multiple universities. Um, I think partly... Well, well, Professor Mike McKenna, who was my PhD supervisor that I mentioned earlier, he was actually a former Bulldogs player as well. So there was a passion there on, on the VU side really driving it at our end, which then drives it up through the hierarchy of the university and, and ultimately having the Vice-Chancellor as someone who recognised our strength in sport, but also the potential of a local partnership uh, that could really cement that Footscray region. Favourite inspirational quote or life <laughs> motto? I'm not sure if it's inspirational or not, but one I, I used to, to say to my cyclists when I was coaching a, a few times was just remember it, if it didn't nearly kill you, it, sorry, if it didn't kill you, it probably nearly did. Um, and, and that you know, it's a lighthearted way of, of saying that that was a really hard session that you just did. So it's a reinforcement of work, work ethic by them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's partly building belief as well. So it's, you know what, you've actually just done something that was really, really hard. So if you can do that in training, two things. One, your opposition may not have been doing that today. So you're, you're ahead of the game by, by doing that session. And remember, in races, when you think it's hard, remember back to today. 
and nothing in races is going to be that hard ever again. Mm. Uh, this is the hardest training or event stuff you've ever done. So it didn't kill you. It probably nearly did, but it didn't kill you. And yeah. you, you got there by working hard. And I think, you know, we, there's who knows how many talented athletes out there. There's, there's truckloads of them in every sport. 